In this video, we're going to our, extend our knowledge on similar figures and start looking at the relationship between the ratios of the sides and how those compare with perimeters, areas, and volumes of these different shapes that we'll look at. So for the first example here, what we're going to do is we're going to start with two squares. So let's go ahead and sketch two squares, one that has a side length of two and then the other that has a side length of three. So here's one square, has a side length of two, and then I'm gonna say that this one has a side length of three, just making it look slightly larger. So let me go ahead and label that squares, all four sides are the same. And then this one I'm gonna say has side length of three. So the first thing is, why would these squares have to be similar? So they're similar because just by looking at them, you know that all squares are going to be the same shape because a square has to be the same shape since it's made up of four right angles. So why are the squares similar? Um, because they are the same shape. Or you could say because all corresponding angles are congruent because all of the angles have to be 90 degrees. Um, corresponding angles are congruent. So from there we can say that they must be similar. So then the question becomes um, what is the ratio of the corresponding sides? So for this picture we have one square that has a side length of two and then the other square has a side length of three so that means the ratio of I'm gonna always when I'm talking about the ratios here I'm always gonna talk about small to big just so that we're consistent it doesn't really matter um, so for our ratios that we're gonna set up I'm gonna use small to big or you can write it as a fraction remember small over big so when I say comparing these I could write two to three or you could say 2 over 3. And it doesn't have to be small to big, but that I'm just choosing it so that we're consistent. So that's the ratio of the corresponding sides. The next step is what's the ratio of the perimeters? So let's find the perimeter. So remember, perimeter means you're going to add up all the side lengths. So if I do 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, or a shortcut, 2 times 4, you're going to get 8. And then for this one, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, or 3 times 4, you get 12 for the perimeter. So what's the ratio of the perimeters? Well, it's going to be 8 to 12, or you could say 8 over 12. So then the question is, how does this compare to the ratio of the sides? So in order to truly compare a ratio, we want to simplify these if possible. So if we look at our fractions, can we simplify this? So 8 over 12, can you reduce that? Well, yes, you can reduce it by dividing top and bottom by 4, and when you do that, you get 2 over 3. Same thing. If I reduce this ratio here, divide both parts by 4, and you end up with 2 to 3. So in the end, the ratio of the perimeters is 2 to 3, and if I compare that back to the ratio of the sides, well, you're seeing that it's exactly the same. So what that means is the ratio of the sides is equal to the ratio of the perimeters. And that will always be the case. So that's a key idea that the ratio of the sides is always going to equal the ratio of the perimeters for similar figures. So there's one scenario. The next one is let's compare their areas. So remember, area is length times width for a rectangular square. So the area of this first one is going to be 2 times 2, so it's going to be 4. The area of this second one is 3 times 3, so that's going to be 9. So now if we compare that, you can say it's either 4 to 9, or you can write it as a fraction, 4 to 9. And check before we start comparing these to the ratio of the sides, can these reduce? So 4 and 9 do not have a common factor, so those are not going to reduce. So that is the reduced ratio. So 4 to 9, how does that compare 
to the ratio of the sides. So now when I compare these, I know that they're not equal. And you might be thinking, well, from 2 to get to 4, you could times it by 2, but that doesn't hold true for the denominator. So think about another way that you could get from 2 to 4 and then from 3 to 9. So maybe you're thinking you could square it, and that's absolutely the correct way to do it. So if you squared the ratio of the sides, that would equal the ratio of the areas. So imagine taking 2 and squaring it, 3 and squaring it, that would get you the ratio of the areas. And it's because you're multiplying. You're doing a length times a width, so you're dealing with two dimensions, and you're multiplying those two dimensions, so that's why it ends up getting squared. So that's my next key idea, is that the ratio of the sides squared is going to equal the ratio of the areas. So that's the next formula. And then the last one, well now we're going to be using these squares to build cubes. So that means you're going to have a cube. Let me enlarge this a little bit. So we'll have a cube with side lengths of 2, and then a larger cube with side lengths of 3, and so let me put the, I'm missing that dimension there, so let me get rid of this, I already have that labeled as the height. So the length, the width, and the height are all going to be the same as what we're getting at. So to find the volume, volume, if you remember, of a cube is length times width times height. So you're going to be multiplying those three. So for this, it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the third power. So 2 times 2 times 2 is going to be 8. And then the volume of this cube will be 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 to the third, which is going to be 27. So if we compare the ratios of those, so the small to the big, I'm going to compare 8 to 27 or 8 over 27. And when you look at those, again, think about reducing those. Those aren't going to reduce, so those are just going to stay as is. But if you go back and you compare those, how do those compare to the ratio of the sides? So definitely not equal. Think about how area was related. It was squared because you were multiplying two dimensions. For volume, you're multiplying three dimensions. So it's not going to be just 2 times 4 to get 8 because that doesn't hold true for the denominator. It's going to be 2 to the third gives you 8, and 3 to the third gives you 27. So because it's three dimensions, you're multiplying three dimensions. It's the same thing as saying the ratio of the sides cubed is equal to the ratio of the volumes. So that's our last formula. So it makes perfect sense because when you do perimeter, you're adding, so you keep the units. When you do area, you multiply two dimensions, so you square your units, so you square your ratio. And for volume, you multiply three dimensions, so you cube your units and you cube your ratio of your sides to get your ratio of volumes. So there we have it. Those are your three formulas. Um, we'll talk a little bit too again about how, to, how we can set these up more in like a formula um, way. And, but for right now, these are your three key ideas that you need. So if we look at this example, let's kind of see how we can apply that. So the first thing here, we have triangle RST is similar to triangle XYZ. So that's important that they're similar. And we have RS is 3, XY is 2. So the first thing I'm thinking is, let's get a picture drawn. So we have triangle RST can be any looking triangle. And we have RS is 3. And then we have a similar triangle to that. So same shape, different size, XYZ. 
and xy is 2. We know that the area of the first triangle, so the area of this is 27. We want to find the area of xyz. So a way to do this is to use our new idea which says that the ratio of the sides squared is equal to the ratio of the areas. Because otherwise, what you could do um, would be you'd have to have enough information to be able to find the height of this triangle, which you could solve the area formula backwards, get the height of this triangle, and then use your ratio to find the height of this triangle so that you could then um, find the um, area of that triangle using your area formula base times height over 2. So actually you'd have to use this height here um, because I, I would be using this as the base. So that approach would be a lot more challenging. So I would use this new idea that the ratio of the sides, so really what that means is if I say side 1 over side 2, the ratio of the sides squared is going to be equal to area 1 over area 2, the ratio of the two areas. So basically I took this formula up top here and I just kind of wrote it out as um, something that's easier to solve mathematically. So side 1 over side 2 squared is equal to area 1 over area 2. So ratio of side squared equals ratio of the area. So let's go ahead, we plug in, so we have 3 and 2. So that squared is going to be equal to the area of the first figure, which is 27, over, I don't know this area, so I'm going to call that x. Before you finish solving this proportion, though, we need to square each piece. So this is going to be 9 over 4 equals 27 over x. So I'm just going to rewrite that up here. So 9 over 4 equals 27 over x. And then from here, we can go ahead and cross multiply. So I have 27 times 4. So we get 108 equals 9x, divide that by 9, and you get x equals 12. So that means my area 2, which is the second shape here, if I call this 1 and 2, um, area of triangle xyz is going to equal 12 units squared, or in this case it says square inches, so it would be inches squared. So there's one example. In this last example, it says two pentagons are similar. The ratio of their areas is 144 to 25. So let's highlight that. That's important. And it says if the perimeter of the smaller pentagon is 40, we want to find the perimeter of the larger pentagon. So the first thing I'm looking at is the ratio of their areas. I could go from there and find the ratio of the sides because I know that the ratio of the sides squared is equal to the ratio of the areas. And because I don't want to go directly right from areas to perimeter, I want to go back, find the ratio of the sides, and then from there we can say, well, the ratio of the sides is equal to the ratio of the perimeters, and use that to final, finalize our answer. So let's go ahead, and the first thing here is if we square root each of these, that's going to give us the ratio of the sides. So ratio of sides will be in a one, let me square root these, so it's not 144, the square root of 144, which will be 12, and then square root of 25 gives us 5. So now what we know is the ratio of our sides is in a 12 to 5 ratio, and then the, we are given one of the perimeters, and we want to find the other perimeter. So now we can use side 1 over side 2 is equal to perimeter 1 over perimeter 2. So in this case we want to go big to small when we set up our proportion because of the fact that the 12 is the bigger number and that's coming first. Otherwise you'd have to flip that so I'm going to say 12 over 5 is equivalent to, it says we're trying to find the larger pentagon's perimeter, so that's going to go here as the x, and the one that I do know is the smaller pentagon, which is 40. So then that's our setup using our key idea. Go ahead and cross multiply, so we have 5x 
equals 12 times 40. And that is going to give us 480. Divide that by 5, and that gives us 96. So that means the perimeter of larger pentagon is 96, and my units are just going to stay centimeters. So that's it. So that's using your um, new key idea that the ratio of the sides is equal to the ratio of the perimeters. Remember, always go back to the ratio of the sides so that you can use that to then compare either the perimeters or the areas. Um, also keep in mind with this that your setup here might be helpful to have a picture. I didn't necessarily do a picture just for the sake of time, um, but it might be helpful just so you can again compare small to big, you know what you're looking at. And then when you cross multiply, you might not have to always cross multiply. So if you looked at the proportion here, you might have thought, well, 5 times 8 gives me 40, so can I just do 12 times 8 to get X? Absolutely. Same answer. So it's another way to think about a proportion when it works out nicely. So just keep that in mind. So go ahead, do your check your understanding problems, um, and we will talk about those tomorrow.